on this episode of the Roundtable Podcast. This is unlike an episode you've ever seen before. We drink beer. We play football. We talk about all kinds of shit from our college experience. D Myers on the episode. I can't believe I signed up for this and mom... You might have to pick a different episode to watch. Uh, he's glad he signed up for it. We got Trey Speed. This was a great episode. Um, shout out to Sam Adams, though. Yeah, Danny? Yeah, Turkey Bowl 2022. Can't miss it. Yeah, we fucking got the intern. No, what you got to say? Better put your fucking blast, microphone on. Blast. Yeah, this motherfucker. Cole's at TSA PreCheck. This neck is a fucking roll. neck roll. This is a great episode. Let's go to the show. Roundtable podcast. I'm your boy Corey G at Small Arms. Danny at Trey. Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. This is the Turkey Bowl edition. We are drinking Sam Adams. Thanks yes, for the sponsorship. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah, Uncle motherfucker. Sammy. We got six mics hooked up. We got Tyler and Tyler. Tyler on Tyler crime happening. There's a lot going on here, and we have no clue what we're talking about. No, we have we no always know about <laughs> ACT. We always. I know. think we should start with that. I think that's yeah, an amazing so, part. Yeah. So before the the camera got rolling, we were talking about ACT scores, and you know, I wouldn't say I'm. I'm calling I'm, bullshit. I'm, you know, <laughs> I, I, listen, listen, listen. I, I consider myself a well-rounded individual, like a oh. Renaissance man. You know, yeah. I'm a little bit creative, a <laughs> little bit of business, a little bit of smarts, a little bit of you know everything. He <laughs> dropped a lot but, of passes but, in the game. I mean, science kind of because I understand creatine, <laughs> but that's right. That's right. But that is science. Mr. Sealover here got a 29. Is in it, that's probably the highest ACT score out of all of us, correct? Yeah. For sure. Oh, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to find out go. right now. I think this is yeah. a good so, way to start. So okay. Tyler with the 29. Yeah. I'll save mine for last. All right. Uh, <laughs> I, got 20, I called a quiz. I got a 29 and called a quiz. It's been I'm like, cited I'm done. many times. 29. Yeah, 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 Trayvon. Uh, I got a 24. Oh, oh fuck yeah, I Trey. I wasn't like that good at like standardized testing, but like. Who is? When it came to this, like, yeah, actual really schoolwork, though, and everything like that, I got really good. What did you have to get to, to run track, though? Did they have a minimum, like, Probably for an what, athlete? 21 yeah, or something. I don't even know. I think it was, like, 18 or something. Oh, uh, yeah, like okay. <laughs> I wouldn't have got in. Good. So, wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Was it, was it, like, like did you prep for it, or, like, what was your... No, no so you just, no, like, just took, took it. it, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. the, you, gotta, you guys have to remember that the ACT is, it's a multiple choice, mm -hmm. like, standard. It's multiple yeah. choice questions. So I picked the wrong answers. Yeah, so, like, really, like, really anybody could just walk in there and just, like, give you guess whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And grab it. Uh, mine was so I took it twice. I was a two-time guy. Uh, first time I got a twenty. I think it was a twenty-one. Yeah. And then I took it again. And I got an eighteen. So I just cut it. All right, twenty-one. <laughs> yeah, I was a one and done. Uh, twenty-one. All right. Nice. Yeah, I'm yeah. really bad at standardized testing. Yeah, for I sure. Hate. And just tests in general. I hate him. I I took the mm. ACT on my birthday. Oh, oh nice. nice. And okay. I got a twenty. Damn. And then cut it. We, we all suck. Like, yeah. yeah. Let's ride. Yeah. <laughs> what test was I taking when I got a 13? Life. Life. <laughs> <laughs> like, did I go to a different fucking what test that so you guys went to? So like, what? Like, it was the same test. Like, what <laughs> test did I go to? Wait, did you have a, any 40s in, like, Newports before the yeah. test or something? No, or like, that was just, that that was, I was just drinking black, or I was smoking black <laughs> and miles <laughs> and drinking, I think, uh, like, wild Irish rose, right, Alizé, right. you know, so like, 96. What was the, you know? <laughs> what, was, what was the, like, like what? At what point was it like super fucking hard? Where you're like, holy fuck, I have no idea what's going the on. Whole the whole time. Or did you think, like, did you, think like, you knew it? Or, were you or okay, okay, okay. Hold on. Was there any like section of the test where you were like, oh, I fucking got this shit? No, or, no, literally not. Yeah, like, the whole time like, I was English like, or I was like, I don't understand any of this. I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and, the score and then I up. just keep telling my mom I want to lift weights. Uh, now he's rolling on. Yeah, race. you know. Yeah, so. That yeah. just goes to show for a shout out to all you homies out there that got 13 to 19. So there's, there's hope a, for you. You got a 13. Is, right? I got a fucking 13. I was the one and done also. Just to be clear. Yeah. No, I got a 13. Yeah. So, yeah. Have you I was. Have you thought about like going. <laughs> Gold's really intrigued by Have you ever thought about this. like going and like retaking it at all to like. You know? I, I would do that. Would you? <laughs> yeah. Just to see. Yeah. Yeah, It'd so be quite interesting. Yeah, and then like I remember the first time I told her, <laughs> <Scores> like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if I beat myself at all, <laughs> I'd be it scores, like, it scores like a ten. I remember I think Ray got like a twenty five or a twenty six, nice. yeah. and um, I remember when we were talking about it, and I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, I didn't do real good. She's like, oh, like would you get like a twenty? I'm like, no, I got like thirteen. She's like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like sign it up for that, honey. <laughs> Did AG yeah, take it yet? The bills, though. Yeah, AG got I think a 16 or 17, so he didn't score real well on it, real well on it. But he's way better at school, so it's definitely the test taking part of it. Like my attention span mm -hmm. struggled, but I also struggled on the actual subjects. Yeah, yeah. No, so, no that's a true reflection of like what you're going to experience. Well, no, in obviously, life, but value, yeah. For sure. But I gotta admit though. During that, I was thinking, like, I'm a fucking, like, I felt like a fucking idiot, obviously. Same. And then, but then, I went to Columbus State. Mm -hmm. In my first quarter, I was on the honor roll for the Very first good. time in my Very life. Good. Dude, Very yeah. Good. And I brought it home and hung it on my fucking fridge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my mom. As it I was be. like, see, mom. <laughs> As it should see, be. mom. And then, the next quarter, I met Rachel, didn't go to class for a while, got a D in advanced weight training. <laughs> we know that ain't accurate. Yeah, that's not <laughs> accurate also. So... Yeah, so some fit pitfalls. <laughs> See, but that just goes like to show Corey's life it, makes no yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. no, not at all. But not at all. I'm a diamond good. in the rough, kid. So that <laughs> just goes to show like how like where your priorities are set. Yeah, really lift depends weights. on like what's going on, you know. <laughs> He'd hold on, hold on. Wait, we can't glaze too. over or, uh, Columbus. That you gotta bring Don into the equation here. Yeah. So of, Don, who's listen, Don? Listen. So Don Labenthal, Bro shout Fesser. out to Professor, aka Don Hoff, and <laughs> <laughs> he's amazing. So Don, listen, twenty years, well, fuck, twenty five years ago, however long it was ago, yeah. is um, he was starting the exercise specialist program, which is a one year certificate program, which is literally perfect for me. So I was like, all right, I had like two older chicks and like two other people and me in the class and that was it and they loved me right because i was going in i was fucking Taking i was half off. drunk i was always on my shirt was always off i was smoking newports on the way to fucking class that's i was a fucking dude. train wreck <laughs> that's my dude I mickey's 40s and newports it was fucking epic Slim actually it wasn't even new i couldn't even afford newports i was smoking vegas stars yeah 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 yeah. ask <laughs> dustin what he comes he'll, he'll dustin tell you all about it six. yeah oh it's so bad <laughs> <laughs> and so I meet Rachel on spring break and I just don't show up for a month. And I'm thinking, fuck it, you don't need a – this is my whole thought process. You ready for this, Tyler? I'm here. I'm here. I, yeah, you're here for this. I was like, well, yeah, that was a different thought. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you, there's no law that says you need a personal training certification to train people. So I was like, fuck it, I don't need this thing. So I just don't go. I'm obviously fucking around. And then Don calls me and says – Hey, Corey, you know, there's only five people in the class. Like, would you like to come back? And I'm like, well, can I come back? And he's like, sure. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll be there on Monday. And so I just roll right back in like nothing happened. And I, like I said, I got a D in advanced weight training. But, you know, shit worked out. I just I just needed some time. You yeah, know, just for a uh, late bloomer. Like, yeah, just <laughs> for like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a late bloomer for sure. Yeah, just for all like the new listeners. Can yeah. you please uh, talk about the, the speech story again? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, this yeah. is amazing. Hold on, let me take a drink of sandwich. <laughs> Hold on, shout yeah, out. Get, shout that, out get that real quick. There you go. Close up. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, nice look at, oh, as oh. it should be. Oh, oh he's going. Yo, he's, he's, a, he's a master. He's chugging chugger. it right yeah. now. For those of you listening, Jesus chugged a lot of people. Rest in peace. I was at least 40. I was a 40. That was right. impressive. Should I? That wasn't as fast as my best. But we're, we're getting there. All right. Where, is Rachel here? Uh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't very good. All right. So. That was impressive. So Rachel's out. Right. This is like. No, uh, this is circa like 2000 or whatever. Or 99. Rachel's out. And I'm like. You know. I need to stay awake to do this paper. Trey. You'd like this. Because you're a tequila guy. So I, there's a bottle of Jose Cuervo. And I'm like. You know what. I can't stay awake. If I take shots of Jose Cuervo. That'll keep me up. Mm-hmm. And I'm, what a fine strike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. You made yeah, that decision in two seconds. <laughs> this made so much sense Smart. to me. No, it doesn't make sense. So I'm writing my paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's due the next day. Yeah. So I'm writing my paper. About what? Bang. What, what's it about? It's about uh, gym. <laughs> it's, it, well, Bicep I don't know what it was. training? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have no yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it was supposed to be about, okay, but okay. it turned into intensity in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. That's what I ended up making it about. So anyway, so I'm just shooting shots of fucking Jose Cuervo, and I'm writing this paper, and I had the idea that, like, I, my paper obviously sucked. <laughs> I would double space and make the font like that big because I didn't yeah, why know. not? Yeah, yeah why yeah. not? <laughs> so I write the paper. <laughs> don't don't get it proofread. I walk in class the next day. I'm fucking hungover, hammered, a mess. <laughs> yeah, you smell like shit. <laughs> oh, terrible. Yeah. And then Don goes. I'll never forget this. He goes. Everybody's gonna present their paper. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm thinking, 
I never even read mine. <laughs> <laughs> He's reading his own shit for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, hey man, I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> so, and my cotton mouth is so fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I get up. <laughs> All right, so I get up in front of the class. Yes. And I start reading it. None of it makes sense at all. But the last sentence is, when you got to be a straight up dog in the gym. <laughs> right? And then. I can't even get that sentence. So before I even get to that sentence, which everything makes their run on sentences, nothing makes sense. It's fucking way worse than now. It's terrible. Yeah. I can't talk. I can't talk because my, my tongue is stuck to the roof of my mouth because I got cotton mouth so bad. Like I smoked nine blunts. <laughs> this is way too Danny Walton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this. Train wreck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So imagine a 20 year old version of me on about 12 shots of tequila. No. Yeah. And so the lady in the front row knows I'm struggling. <laughs> she's an alcoholic, so she gets uh, it. She's, right? <laughs> she's feeling it. She yeah, gives me right. her water she's bottle right. like <laughs> while I'm presenting, and I'm like, it was like. Uh. An oasis, oh right? Like, Dude, <laughs> she's an alcoholic. Yeah, she was. So, so <laughs> I got stories there too. So anyway, so I drink that. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I get to the last two sentences, and I'm like, and then when you really, when you're really about it, you're a straight up dog in the gym. And the sentence is like this wide because I'm trying. <laughs> it's in size 32. Yes, yeah. Oh, hey, or 64. Yeah. So then I finish it. Everybody looks like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and I just sit down and think, I don't know. Like, what the fuck just happened? So, yeah. I would have anyway. paid, paid to see Don's face. Dude, I, dude, oh, my God. We, we got to get Don on the podcast. Yeah. To, to, Tell him the stories. To get oh. his perspective yeah. of that story. I don't know what Don ever saw in me. Yeah. <laughs> what you're doing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable. He has a true talent. Yeah. I was a fucking train wreck. Amazing. Yeah, so good. Unru- so what are you going to do whenever AG is like, you know, like. Well, I think I'm teaching him better than that. Like, I had yeah. no direction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if I end him, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. But <laughs> still, at least, like, there's a parent present. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that, that'll help. Gatorade wieners on the driveway. I Jeez. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus that's an all time move, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's just a phase. It really is. Yeah. It's confident. So I just think there's a lot of hope for people out there. Yes. Yeah. That was right, a hell of an introduction. Was that a great right story? It was a great story yeah. to start yeah, the podcast yeah, I, I just yeah. remember like I was trying to talk and my tongue kept getting stuck to the roof of my mouth and I was struggling so fucking hard. Huh. And the lady was like, she with her water bottle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She said, yeah, it was like a salvation. She helped me. Something. All right, where do we go from there? Yeah, great uh, question. Flag football game. Yeah, let's talk Not about the flag, flag football game. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. are we doing right now? That was fun. All right, so <laughs> this is my idea, which I basically came up with yesterday because Tyler didn't even know as I was leaving. I was like, "Hey, Tyler, tomorrow we're and Nick was in the warehouse. I'm like, we're probably gonna play football and work at the house or whatever That's we're doing." Right. And so came home with AG. Now this is where AG's brain works different than mine. He's like, "Dad," he's like, "I think by looking at it that it's about 14 feet in between each." pylon like each yard marker and i was like all right cool whatever and so he come out and laid out the field last night because it gets dark at like six o'clock so we were kind of mm-hmm. under the gun so i get two five gallon buckets of house paint 14 inch roller and fucking literally just paint the field in my yard and ag laid it all out like a grid i came through and fucking tightened it up and like we were a hell of a team last night and then he went to beat up to watch a fucking game with his boys and it was fucking, you know, it just came to life. And this is probably mm-hmm. 10 years that we've done the, that the game, long. roughly. Because wow. I think AG yeah, so was, cool. it's been a long time. Yeah. And we've had, uh, you know, what's crazy is, like, Braxton just texted me. Actually, I just saw, he's like, what day are we playing? Like, there's some guys that have come here and played that you're like, there's no, we have no business playing with these <laughs> dudes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's it's uh it's been really good for my family. You know, Kyle and Trey have both captured multiple of them. We've made books of them and, like, now that my nieces and nephews are older, they're bringing friends, they're bringing boyfriends. Like people look forward to the Turkey Bowl game at my mm-hmm. crib, which is really <laughs> cool. And I wanted to just experience it with you guys at the office to show like this is something that you know I look forward to. It, it's one of those things that no matter how tired I am, how much of a pain in the ass it is, I'll go out there and paint that thing. It's taken me five hours before, but I seen the first time I did it, which was when AG was maybe like eleven. And randomly, Boom was playing for the Colts at the time. And Boom would always, like, you know, I would help him train in the offseason. He was like, gee, 
whatever you need. I never charged them. I was like, you know what? Can you help me run AG's birthday party? Like, because the kids will fucking absolutely love it. And he drove back. He was in camp. And he was like, yo, Beanie's going to bring his kids out. And I was like, all right, dope. Let's ride. Like, And then all of a sudden, like, AG's, like, 11th or 12th birthday was Team Beanie versus Team Boom. And people are bra- kidding That's me. Amazing. <laughs> like, in my what? backyard, randomly, not planned. <laughs> it's like a childhood dream. Yeah, Boom, yeah, boom was planned, but Beanie came through, and, like, people were dropping their kids off, and we're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, like, there was dads like, yo, can I stay and watch this? Like, they were fucking shocked. <laughs> they me. were – it was amazing. And so there's been some pretty epic uh, games that have happened here in the backyard over the last decade that there's no way I could have, you know, even thought of, that thought that would be, was even possible. But it's memories. And Rachel's really good at this kind of stuff. She's like, certain things like this that the kids will remember. And then we ca- we've captured it because of having the, you know, the quality material has been really awesome. So I want to kind of start that tradition with just the office guys. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that's something that we do each year, which, you know, we can all look forward to. So yeah. it's cool. A little shit like that matters, I think, which is when I bought this property, which is what I was like, I don't care if my kids play soccer, lacrosse, doesn't matter. We've got room to do whatever. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's something I really look forward to. So it's cool. Hey, thanks for having us today. Yeah, man, man you got really it. Of course, fun. that was a lot of fun. For That's sure. a pretty stark contrast between what we were just what you were just describing to p- between like trying to find the direction in your life, and then you got these stars out here in your family, <laughs> yeah. and like you got the hell of a compound right here. Yeah, so it's this it's is sweet. It's wild, but it is based around family, which is mm. cool, and I think that's why everyone shows love, like because it's really like about that like just that time you know what i mean because everyone wants to fucking everyone's so used to playing in the backyard and when growing up and it's like when you can do that as an adult i think it's different you know what i mean because i think people lose that play which is what brian peters talks a a lot Mm -hmm. about so it's pretty good what was your what was your experience like trevway well, you're the all-time quarterback. You have Joey B's high school jersey on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, talking to the mic. Talking to the mic. How's that arm and shoulder? Day. We know you're listening. Paying homage to Joey B. Shout-out to Joey B. No free shout-outs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a l- little knee injury this week. Uh, so, I was all-time QB, just slanging the rock. But uh, shout-out to my receivers. We had a good day. <laughs> wearing your Tim's. <laughs> wearing your Tim's. So, so hold on. All right, slanging so hold on. I think Trevor's paid off. He was paid off. I want to say I agree with that. I want to say Treadway Burrow had a great day. Treadway Burrow. He, he had a, he had a he had a fantastic day at QB, slinging the rock, made a lot of great plays. But Treadway, can you break down the last? Uh, I think we were about to score the game-winning touchdown, and you and Tyler Seelover tried to do a trick play. Can you? Yeah, break it down yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Break that down. Yeah, break Dang. that down. So, like, describe that to listeners. So there there comes a point during a game where you feel like you are untouchable. And when I was on the team with Tyler, C. Lever, Nick, Cole, and Noah, we just felt untouchable. So we get the ball down on like the two yard line and I'm like, I'm gonna hit Tyler C. Lever in the back of the end zone with a behind the back pass. <laughs> Hey, Which did not he fucking tried. work. That was not the first Trey fucking tried. intercepted yeah. that yeah. shit. I was running yes. downhill and could not make it back. <laughs> it was, yes. We tried. And uh threw a pick. But but we won, so that's all that matters. Yeah. It's yeah. Good. What do you mean we won? You would have won no matter what team you were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're the all-time. <laughs> you're the all-time really quarterback, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Jeez. It was. I mean, I would argue that somebody slipped you some fucking dough. Yeah. Someone because we started kind of slow on our side. I'm just saying. But we were we were firing all cylinders on your team. We were, we were but stacked, I'll yeah. say this: on the, on the other team, we had a lot of bad drop balls. For sure. Uh, oh yeah, drop the wind was going in different directections. <laughs> I like Kyle's drop. Factors. Shout out Kyle behind the camera. Yeah, one one glove Kyle. One <laughs> Cole, Kyle. <laughs> Cole, Cole, Cole had a couple listen, drops. Listen, listen, listen. Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cole's line drop. Cole, 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 Cole looked like Drew. First that. off, yeah. all right, there's, a, there's a few things we need to clear up. First off, <laughs> first off, first off, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> listen. First off, people forget I was a sought after D3 recruit. Hey, people did forget that. Let him know, Cole. Let him know. Every Every school, probably in Pennsylvania, Ohio, West All Virginia, Indiana, right. whatever, they were they were coming after me. And listen, and then now there was a few D one schools that hit me up, and I said, "You went to Purdue on a real." I went to fucking- Purdue. I went to Cincinnati. I had mm. I had Harvard, Princeton. I had all those Ivy League schools, and I basically said, hey, "Did you listen, really have hey, Harvard or Princeton?" Hey, I swear, hey. no, no, they, <laughs> Cornell, Cornell can't make this, can't make it up. Get and I was, and I was like, guys, Just this moment. And I was like, guys, <laughs> listen, you know, I, I you know, I might be out of the skill gap. Like I got to go compete with guys. Like I need to compete. <laughs> So D three was a crew. I would have went to Denison Big Red. Shout out Big Red. Yeah, shout out. Um, but yeah, you know, 
You know, listen, <laughs> listen. Whenever you got like pecks of steel and you try to catch the ball, first off, we were playing with a small ball. We weren't yeah. playing with a big that, size ball. Is that ball. what it was? Prop- I was trying to bo- <laughs> I was trying to body catch a lot of yeah. stuff, yeah. and it was just bouncing off my pecs. Like I couldn't, I couldn't help. <laughs> it. Was it was like then the pass. wide open like. And then it bounced off your pack, and you just missed it. Yeah, that was that. but hey, listen, I you know I said today's not my day. But, no, you know, but it was Tre- though. You had some Treadway kept feeding me the yeah. uh, kept feeding me the ball. Listen, lined up in power eye formation on a two yard line. You got the touchdown. <laughs> me, hey, ball security. Hey, security. Hey, 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 I do want to say though, I was catching those slant passes. You know, like those quick five yard yeah, games. Yeah, ball security. That. Danny saw it. <laughs> Danny, Danny saw it. I said no. This every time, every time Cole ball was about, every time Cole's about to get tapped to be like, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That, that fucking deep post though, when it went off your chest, that was the funniest shit. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like you're wearing shoulder pads. <laughs> yeah, it did look like you were, bro. Yeah, I'm telling you, fast, I'm telling you, it hit was like, yo, listen, I hit my left pec, and you know, most of the time, most of the time you can try to win it, it just boom, ten feet in the air. So what? It looked like you just it did happens. 300 pushups. You should yeah. see this man try to swing a golf club. Tell yeah. Me about that. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's an automatic Just chest pump. Big. For you people at home, <laughs> we had, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we, I've had Preston, you know, try to help me with my golf swing. Listen, guys, I put my hands like this. It's an automatic chest pump. I, listen, you know, like a seat cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an automatic Titty chest pump. So it's, just yeah. not, it's just not happening. So, Trayvon, you had uh, a, a big time play in the game where <laughs> you made an interception in the end zone he did, he did. to give us a chance to win. What did that feel like, Trey? felt amazing. Yeah. I thought we were going to come back and do it, but we ended up blowing it, though. Yeah. What, what happened on the next <laughs> drive? Not so. <laughs> yeah. Trey, the next drive, yeah, a, a total drop. <laughs> total, drop. <laughs> total, total drop that, like, you know, it probably would have won the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you were basically going like, to score a touchdown. <laughs> Even though I threw more more interceptions for your team, we still had a chance to win the game. Yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah, you definitely. I don't think the I don't think the score was being tracked correctly though. <laughs> Every time we asked what it was, <laughs> it, it was, was like eight, eight to seven. seven. Yeah, yeah this twenty score, minutes later, yeah. oh, eight to seven. Trey's <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like it's nine to eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we missed a couple. All right, we're gonna sub in D Myers. He just walk, walked in. Uh, Tyler, you want to sub in D? Yep. All right, so, you know, we were talking we'll, – we'll flip back to early Corey G for a second. Okay. So, Dustin, we were just talking about uh, – I'm here uh, for the or- early Corey G. Yeah, I know, sure. I Welcome. know. So, you're going to confirm a couple okay. things. So, yeah. we were talking – they were asking me about um, when I drank a bunch of fucking tequila and mm-hmm. did, like, the thing with Dawn and I couldn't fucking, like, talk. Function. But it's like – well, yeah, I couldn't <laughs> function. But what they don't understand is that I went from a degenerate straight up mm-hmm. to a business guy kind of quick though. Yeah, yeah. So maybe you there, were, sp- there was some overlap there too. Yeah. Yeah. So was- maybe talk about that D Let's talk about that real well, quick. I think you got to understand, you know, you kind of grew up faster than the rest of us. Yeah, we yeah, were yeah. still living that college life. You were living in the house with us while we're still in college. Yeah. But you were out of the college world. You were starting your professional career. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, of course there's going to be some overlap. <laughs> there's we're definitely gonna, some overlap we with Mickey's forties. <laughs> <laughs> we were pulling you into our degenerate world and we couldn't understand like, what, what do you mean you're not going to go out on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with us? <laughs> you're like, well, I got clients. It's talk about the Saturday. 40 guard for a second though. Do okay. you remember? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the 40 what is this? guard. Oh yeah. Oh, Maybe you guys haven't heard this. this yet. I've never heard of this. Okay. So I'm going to paint a picture for you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I think things have really changed on college campuses in general, and probably Ohio State. You know, the Gateway. It's yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was back, hood as a motherfucker. Back in the day, we, we, lived we were hood. We lived <laughs> yeah. on Twelfth and Indianola. <laughs> yeah, we had a townhouse, and uh, one of our roommates served what he called a forty garden. He would collect his like forty bottles, yep. and he would like stack them up outside, like where your landscaping would be. <laughs> And then sometimes we would have parties and we would break the 40s. So there would just be broken glass everywhere. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I no, think you guys would love yeah, this. No, and yeah, and people would walk up. They'd be like, what the fuck's all so this So basically, glass? when you'd walk up to our house, we would have a garden of 40s. That's amazing. <laughs> like yeah, empty 40s. Yeah, normally yeah. there'd be like some hostas and some daisies. No, it was... 40s stacked up and broken 40s. Right? That was the just 40 glass break. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we just act like there was, no, and there was never an idea of like, hey, maybe we should clean that up. Well, we drank like a 40 every night. So like there was like 50 <laughs> or 100 fucking 40s sitting out there. At yeah, least. everyone drank at least one 40. Every <laughs> Wait, so you, put them in, so you put them in your front yard? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, in the landscaping. In, in, the, the, in place of there, landscaping. Was there no like beer fairies on campus? Do you guys know what a beer fairy is? I don't know what that so is. So we, we had them whenever I was in school. So basically like you would throw like your cans and like all that yeah. stuff into the yard. Oh, and like then, them. yeah. And then by the time you came out the next morning, they were gone. No, no, no. Things have changed. Had. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah things yeah. have changed big time. Cart, yeah. Now there yeah, might yeah. be like a homeless guy out there sleeping with yeah, them or yeah. something. But yeah, no one was cleaning it up or anything like that. And so 
I remember you also, this is when we still lived on 12th. Yeah. Your 40 of choice was the Mickey's. Of course, 100%. And you had a big pyramid of Mickey's in the room. <laughs> yes. And it seemed really cool at the time. It was probably like 100 of them stacked up. <laughs> I think I had 22s of Heineken. Yeah, you Heineken. did. You had 22. Deuce, yeah, so deuce my windows Heineken. were lined with Deuce Deuce the Heineken. <laughs> I wasn't a 40 guy. I was a 44 guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the 40 guard was epic. Yeah. So Dustin, I want Dustin to tell the story of like, so one time in our in our house on 12th, we had a, a toilet that was overrunning, right? I, and, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, Rachel wouldn't even, like, she wouldn't even barely go to the bathroom in this house. Oh, yeah. Fucking, none, of, none of our girlfriends would use the shower. There was the so house. much mold yeah. and nice. it was so fucking bad. But anyway, we had uh, a water bill that we got one time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah. We had a water bill that was like hey. three, four hundred dollars. And hey, so I think it was six hundred. Yeah, it was, so, it was, so, no it was something uh, okay, insane because the fucking toilet just kept running. Go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> damn terrible. <laughs> so our our toilet had been broke for a while. It was still just running, 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 right? Yeah. And we had I think we had called our landlord about it and he never did anything. We might have even called him again. We didn't think it was no big deal because it wasn't overflowing. It was just, you know, your toilet's just running. Well, it's just using water when it does that. Out of nowhere, we get a water bill for like six hundred bucks. Yeah. And our landlord, Garth, if you're listening. His name is Garth. His name is yeah. Garth. <laughs> I'll never forget He was a you know, stand-up guy. I mean, they had a bunch of rentals around, around campus or whatever. And Corey was like, I'm going to call Garth. I'm going to handle this. And I'm thinking, oh, you're going to handle it, okay? <laughs> now, keep in mind, this is pre-business Corey G. Yeah. I mean, this is 40 Garden. This yeah. is like smoking Newport. <laughs> this is Mega Stars. Mega Stars. <laughs> yeah, like he, there's never been any type of business situations yet. Nah. Of course, I'm going to handle this. I said, all right. Yeah, I wonder what that was going to say. Like, <laughs> So he calls, and I think you had the voicemail, right? Yeah, I got voicemail. So you get the voicemail, and I just hear, I can hear like, and this is on an answering machine. <laughs> so probably everyone in the office is going to hear it because this yeah, isn't yeah. like your voicemail on yourself. So I, I can hear in our house phone that Corey has up to his ear. I can hear like the, you know, thank you for calling, blah, 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 realty. Yada, yada. I'm thinking, all right, what's he going to say? Please come fix it. We already tried that. He's like, Garth, listen up, motherfucker. <laughs> we, got a, we got a fucking water bill for 600 We are not paying this fucking thing. We told you weeks ago, you better come fix our fucking toilet, pay this goddamn bill. My jaw dropped. <laughs> we're maybe, you know, we're 19 years old. I'm still thinking, like, you can't talk to a girl like that. Yeah. And it's our landlord. Is he going to throw us in jail? Like, are we yeah. going to get kicked out of our house? And he ran it on him for probably 90 seconds like that. Probably dropped 30 F-bombs. And then he just hung up and looked at me. And I was like, well, <laughs> you did a lot better than I did. When I, him. <laughs> I said, I just motherfucked that motherfucker. <laughs> so, hey, <laughs> hey, dude, hey, what happened to no, right there. Well, 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 first of all. He came, the next day, a plumber was there to fix our toilet. <laughs> we didn't have to pay oh, the yeah. bill. And to this day, me and G will be talking about something. Like, yeah, I had to call Garth that motherfucker. <laughs> I, so that's a that's a verb. Yeah. Yeah. If you Garth, if he says he's gonna Garth someone, I said, oh shit, oh, <laughs> someone's man. getting that phone. Call. It was fucking so funny. I just lit this motherfucker answering machine. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> shit. <laughs> So it, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was some heavy foreshadowing for sure of like future so future business dealings. Oh my gosh, fuck! Hey, while we're on the subject of uh, 12th, I'm gonna tell yeah, one yeah. of the most other epic stories. Yeah, please, go ahead. All right, so we had a uh, we had a party one night. It was in the summertime, and I can remember you had to get up early, like on okay. a Sunday or Saturday morning or whatever, to go train clients. So it's like 6 a.m. Okay, and you came in and you like woke me up, and you were like, "Hey, man, like." Uh, Who's out there on the couch? Oh, yeah, I remember this, yeah. <laughs> I was like, on the couch, you're like, yeah, man, uh, the black guy on the couch, you know who it is? I was like, yeah, that's a, uh, I, th- I said, Tone Capone brought one of his roommates. You're like, nah, man, this guy looks old. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I said, uh, oh, this motherfucker's like 50. <laughs> yeah. I, you're like, I got to go to work, but I need you to go check it out. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, all right. So I get out of bed and I like, you know, I'm on my boxer shorts or something. I like, throw on some mesh shorts and I kind of peek out there. I can see someone's on our couch. You never know who's going to be on the couch when you wake up, you know, mm-hmm. the, you know, especially on 12th. I walk out and I look and sure enough, laying there, curled up, no shoes on, is the bum from UDF. It's always their ass. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. So, They're always there. It's They're Davian. always there. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, shit, how am I going to handle this? He has his shoes off. He's curled up. 
there's a pot of half-eaten macaroni and cheese. He'd made mac and cheese, <laughs> brought the pot, <laughs> ate half of it, then just left it on her a coffee table there. Jesus. I'm like, fuck, you know, what am I going to do? So I'm like, all right, I'm think about this. I'm like, I'm going to go put on shoes in case the guy tries to fight me or something. And then finally, I just wake him up. I was like, hey, man, like, what are you doing here? He just kind of stirs. I'm like, all right, try again. Hey, man, like, did someone bring you here? Because at the time, we got six roommates, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could, yeah. It could be someone's uncle. You never know. I'm like, hey, man, like, who do you know? He's like, oh, I know Damien. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like... I'm pretty sure there ain't no Damien. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, hey, I'm like, well, D Damien don't live here, man. I'm like, you gotta go. So he gets up. He's like, you know, taking his time, scratching his balls. He starts eating some more of the mac and cheese. <laughs> I'm like, hey, man, like, you for real, put your shoes on. You got. I'm sorry, man. You got to leave. I ain't no fool. I ain't no goddamn fool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. I just don't remember. I kind of crept back over to the kitchen table. There was a bottle of Jack Daniels sitting there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of grabbed the bottle. I was like, all right, man. I'm like, you ain't no fool, but you still got to go. Yeah. And so then luckily, without incident, he put his shoes on, and then he left. So that, that was the type of thing that could happen at any moment on 12. You could wake up, and there's a homeless guy on the couch, you know. I mean, there's shelters and stuff for them to go to. I got sympathy for homeless people. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You know, it was definitely a... But he was literally the bub that we saw every day. We every went day. To he so was then, oh, on and the couch one day. Then yeah. the rest of the summer, when we would head to High Street to go to the bars, he would recognize it. Hey, tell Damien, come see <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, how did we make it, D? I don't know. We're, <laughs> we're lucky we're alive after yeah, that. So. I'm telling you, bro. Jeez. Yeah, we had some fucking yeah, that time. and and fifteenth both like we were one eighty east, uh, which is funny because Michaela lived at yeah, this, so, and she lived at one eighty. Yeah, I, I, east twelve. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Which was crazy because I showed her or I told her one day she's like, I think I lived in that yeah, apartment. Yeah, she, she, like it's confirmed. She straight up pulled it up. Yeah, it she lived at one eighty east twelve. Isn't that crazy? She lived. Wow. She lived hey, in the, the same place. The lineage continues. I guarantee <clears throat> her apartment was way cleaner than ours was. Oh, bro. We used to mark on the wall when the garbage would get so high. You know, when you're a kid, your parents would like measure like how tall you got. <laughs> We'd be like, okay, awesome. today's November 26th. The garbage got this high on the wall. So our our like dish <laughs> dish like our, our dishes situation was so bad that we would like wash the dishes and I would just throw them throw the rag out the window and then pour all the shit. So there was a pile of just dirty rags that just sat out on the fucking lawn. Like we didn't, we were fucking That's terrible. Incredible. Yeah. Mom. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you raised me hey, better than that. You raised hey, me. Mom. <laughs> Shout out, Yvonne. Yvonne, if you're watching, you raised me better than this. I don't know what happened. It was a weird time. It was a, it was weird, a weird time. time. Jesus. <laughs> All right, let's move on past it. <laughs> <laughs> Mentally, I'm back on 12th Avenue right now. Yeah. I like it. It's a, bad, it's a weird space. D, we t we t actually, another thing that we talked about right. was – um. ACT scores. Okay. Now Tyler got a twenty nine. So me and which, Tyler are. Tied. Is that what you got? Oh, you yeah. got twenty nine. All right, I couldn't remember if you got twenty seven or twenty. Oh no, twenty nine. Twenty nine. All right. So I had above a thirty in everything except for math. Math, I had a twenty one that brought my average down to twenty. But your kid's really good at math, so that's interesting. My son, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's like, he's doing math on a twelfth grade level now. He's in fourth grade. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. which is crazy, right? Which is probably a bigger level than me. I don't I'm even guess. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's real good. Yeah. So who who had the second highest besides Tyler? Uh, well, Trey. Did you say yours? Well, I was gonna guess I had Trey. 19. Oh, 19. Yeah. Trey I had 20, 24. 20, yeah. Oh yeah, it's Trey. It was Trayvon. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler getting <Yeah>. ducks. <laughs> I mean, Corey, Corey had a 13. Let's yeah, yeah, I, I got the zero. He's already aware of that. <laughs> that I just wanted to remind that him. That doesn't now. determine uh, Yo, success in life. No, but I, I'm going to go I'm gonna go with you could have gotten a higher score. You yeah, maybe a 17. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you for real didn't take it serious. No, I didn't take all. it serious. But, I mean, it was easier to say I didn't take it serious when I got 13. Yeah. I mean, I, my feelings were hurt. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm out here for – listen – it will remain nameless, but there's a guy in these group that came over to me that has a similar ACT, and it gave him inspiration. He was like, gee, I read your book, and I didn't do very well on it, but it gives me, like, hope. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm shout-out to all the 13 to 15s out there. Well, I think, <laughs> you know, there's such an emphasis put on, you know, grades and tests and, and stuff. And test-taking, and I'm bad at it. I mean, yeah, I've always so kids, I think, you know, when they're young, they can kind of get it in their head. Like, if they're not good in school, they're not going to be successful. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that's not always the case. No, it's, it's the case good. sometimes, though. It, it is, for sure. You know what I mean? But also, like, 
uh, obviously the profession I um, took on had nothing to do with uh, geometry yeah. or anything like that. So well, it seems like the, all the real important skills are like intangibles. Yeah, you know, yeah. Accountability, boss ability, fucking ability. discipline, all that shit. Yeah. They need yeah. to have a fucking test about that. A dog test. I you know? wish that, you know, I mean, we're from the fucking middle of nowhere, but some of these schools now have like entrepreneur classes and things like yeah. that. I think if I had things like that, I would have been like, oh, wait, this is how my brain works. You know what I mean? So that would have been really cool. We just didn't have access to things like that at Edison High. Yeah. But that would have been cool uh, for sure. Like even Andon's class, like he came home the other day. He's like, hey, uh, Todd Londoff, which is the guy that was um, – Ben Roethlisberger Center. He's like, he came in and talked about real estate, and then Joe Curry's dad come in and talk about something, and then I'm gonna go in in December. Like, and you can tell like Andon's classes. Like, he's like, yeah, dad. He's like, they had all kinds of questions. You know what I mean? Like, it's just yeah. now more normal, yeah. and it just wasn't really normal for us. There was always like the academic way or the trade way. There was never yeah. a middle way. Dude, Correct. Of you yeah, know, yeah. Of a yeah. and that's why I always stuff. felt like kind of an outcast because I'm like, which way do I go? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lift weights. <laughs> get <yoked>. well, I <laughs> mean, yeah, get yoked. <laughs> not only was there less examples of that, I mean, there was really just less avenues to do it before the internet. There was really. no examples. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not that just was... examples to see it, but examples to actually do it and make it work. Yeah, for sure. You know? No, no. That's why, like, it's hard to stress that nowadays, but that's like, it really felt like kind of super weird because I'm like, wait, no one I know really did this before. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Talk about dust whenever the first mm-hmm. time I was like, you know, or first off, when you thought maybe you were going to school to be a teacher, but then you realize like, oh, wait, this fitness thing might be a real option. Yeah. So I think when I first started working for you, working as a trainer, I might've had one or two years left of school and I did it just because I wanted to like hang out and lift weights and yeah. like, train some people and make some extra money or whatever. I still really in my head, in my heart of hearts thought I was going to go to grad school and become a teacher. Sure. And I still remember the moment when I decided I wasn't going to. Okay. I, my dad was up to visit or something. And we, I must have lived in Olentangy Commons at the time because we were coming up Olentangy River Road, and we came to a light, and there was a um, there was a white Cadillac DeVille 2000. So I it was like a new, the new square body style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulled up to us, and I looked at it. I was like, I was like, oh yeah. Once I'm done with school, I was like, that's a car I want to get. And my dad looked at me. He said, not if you're gonna be a teacher. Oh. I said, I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, that car costs more than a teacher's salary. He said, so you might want to rethink it. And right then I thought, all right, I guess I'm not going to be a teacher. <laughs> That's what he said to you. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. Which, you know, my dad's a, you know, my dad worked in the steel mill. He was never an entrepreneur or anything, but yeah. he at least recognized like, hey, if you're making, you know, right out of school, if you're only making 25 or 30,000, you're going to, you're not going to yeah. afford a brand new Cadillac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, especially back then, you know, Cadillac was kind of like the symbol yeah, of like, ballerness, sure. you know? Yeah. So I that, at least. That moment really kind of hit it, huh? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm not going to say like I knew 100% right yeah, then, yeah. but that was the first time I really thought like, well, maybe I'm not going to be a teacher then. I'd always looked at it as like, I wanted to be a teacher because, you know, English came easy to me. And I was like, well, I want to have summers off, like, which I guess is kind of the wrong Before you go any further, can (laughs) you tell the story? Uh, This is an amazing story. How uh, Dustin was supposed to write a paper. He's a really good fucking writer, like level Danny writer. 25 e-books published worldwide. Yeah, yeah, that too. (laughs) (laughs) All that kid. He didn't write the paper because he's a fucking degenerate. Explained to the teacher that she lost it. He made he convinced <laughs> he convinced the teacher that she lost it. Then rewrote the paper, and then she took him to the honors college because he was so fucking. No, well, well, some shit like that. Well, you got some of the facts. All right, right give me some wrong. of the facts, Dave. Yeah, this is a good story, though. Yeah, yeah. I like the fact that you recognize I'm a good storyteller. Though. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna get a beer while you tell. Yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so senior year of college, OSU. I'm getting ready to finish up my bachelor's, and I'm in my final English class to finish my major. It's like 500 level English. It's Shakespeare. And the lady who teaches is like notorious for failing people because they know it's like, this is like the last hurdle you gotta get. Mm -hmm. She's like super strict. She was like, before she became a professor, she was like a sergeant in the the Air Force or something. (laughs) She was just like super strict. And this is a big class. I mean, there's probably, I don't know, 60, 70 kids in it. It's in a big like lecture hall or whatever. When we only had to do, I think we had to do two projects. I mean, so we had a midterm and then we had a final paper. And I used to in college, I would kind of like writing came real easy to me. I wasn't like the best student, but I got good grades. I would just put everything off till the night before. I'd pull an all-nighter and then whip out like a five-page paper and get an A on it. And it just was easy, right? So I tried to do that for this paper. But this is like a big paper. I mean, it had to be, I don't know, 15, 20 pages or something. <laughs> yeah, you're in it. <laughs> What's that? You're in it for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, you're 15, in it. 20. And you've got to really put some real yeah. effort into it. So anyway, um, I think I had gotten like a you – know, we had the midterm. I would gotten like a – what was it? I think I got gotten a B-minus on the midterm. 
you know, so I was kind of right on par to like, all right, you know, I'll just write a B paper and then I'll be, I'm done with school, you know, party's on. Uh, but I kept putting this paper off and then like basically I had writer's block. I just could not think of anything to write about. And I can't remember if it was just on Shakespeare in general or if it had to be about Romeo and Juliet or whatever. But anyway, long story short, I stayed up all night. And then by the time I got to, you know, five, six in the morning, I finally like realized like I'm not writing a 15 page paper time. It's just not happening. So I went to class and just didn't say anything. Everyone turned in the papers. I just played it cool. And I was like, I was in my head. I'm thinking like, how am I going to call my parents to tell them like, I'm not going to graduate after this quarter. Like it's, it's going to be over, you know? Well then like maybe the next week or whatever, um, you know, we're in there kind of wrapping stuff up and the teacher, I wish I could remember her name too. But, uh, she was like, uh, you know, and I never talked in class or anything. So it's not like we had any type of rapport. She like looks at her list. She's like, uh, Dustin Myers, I, I need you to see me after class. I thought, fuck, here we go. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I walk up to her desk after class. I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm Dustin. She's like, all right. She's like, I, you know, I, um, I just really don't know how to say this. And I'm just really, really embarrassed to tell you, but I think I lost your paper. She's like, I, she's like, problem solved. And remember, this is 2001. Like, email's not really used yet, you know? Um, and she's like, I, I checked, you know, I tore my office apart. I checked my car twice. I've looked at home. I even, you know, looked, you know, on the, in the parking lot between where I normally park in my office. And she's like, so I good. just cannot find your, your paper anywhere. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. She's like, you know, in 20 years of teaching here at Ohio State, I've never lost a student's paper. <laughs> and I just kind of sat there for a second and was like, well, you know, it wasn't the best paper ever. I, didn't, I, didn't, I, I was like, I didn't, I didn't expect you to throw it away. So I, so I, I started trying to charm her a little bit. Yeah. And she was like, oh, I just, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really know what to do here. And she gets out her, her grade book. This is back when they still had a grade book. You know, it was like yeah. a yellow book with the charts where she's like, all right, let's see. Uh, so, you know, you got a, a B minus on the midterm. She's like, you know, what if between you and I, we just say that your paper was probably as good as your midterm? And I went. <laughs> <laughs> I said, honestly, like I was hoping to improve on that midterm. <laughs> He got greedy on him. <laughs> I said, I thought I would have at least a B, but um, I said, you know what? I said, you got, you got, you got all these papers to finish up. I was like, it's, you know, it's the end of the quarter. I said, you know what? That's fair. B minus is fair. She goes, okay. She wrote it in ink right then. B minus. And that was it. That's how I got out. <laughs> I never had to write yeah. the paper. That's, that's, that's good, right? That's yeah. 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 So <laughs> there was actually the girl who sat by me in class. What up? What, what up, up, kitty? Cat, that's Pete. Oh, that's no, shout, shout out, out to the Pete. Pete. <laughs> big Pete on the table right yeah, now. Yeah, big Pete what on the up, table. Pete. So Pete. the um, the girl that I sat next to in class, I remember we had like studied together for the midterm or whatever, and we'd go get like coffee every once in a while or something. Yeah. And I like ran into her like at the coffee shop and said, hey, you're not going to believe it. <laughs> I was like, I got out of writing that paper. And I tore the story. She's like, she's like, unfucking real She's like, I got mine back. And it just said, F, rewrite, pick new topic. <laughs> I, like, I had to pick a new topic and write a whole new paper the last week. And you picked no topic. No topic. So it's one of my favorite stories ever. Yeah, Jack and Mia, if you're watching, <laughs> all time. Yeah. So fucking good. All right, now we need to shift it. We're gonna go Trayvon. Trey, talk to me about. Let's go back to the football game for a second. Okay. Let's go back. To <laughs> we're, we're going all over. Yeah, the place. we're all over the place. Back to the football game. Talk about. The football game experience, camaraderie, and your favorite play. Um, I would have to say first the football experience. So that was a lot of cardio. <laughs> yeah, you like, look winded. I'm not gonna lie. I You're was, the fastest guy on the field, but you look winded. I was winded. I was tired. <laughs> so was Kyle. I was tired. As shit. <laughs> Kyle was like, Kyle. I'm gonna die. <laughs> but Kyle's was, like, I thought I was documenting this, not playing. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun though. Yeah. Um, I didn't I didn't realize that that's what we were exactly doing today. Yeah. yeah I didn't yeah. know that like it was snowing out too. So yeah, like, which is kind of so. But we were like, I was so I was like, are we gonna play? Train loves the cold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Days freezing. Freezing my ass off. But it was an amazing time. I loved it. I had a great time. I mean, it was like, what, like, we did four and four? Yeah, four and four. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. With awesome. all time quarterback Joe Burrow, Joe, Treadway Burrow. Happy Who rigged the game. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Rigged the game on yeah, yeah, yeah. the interception. And uh, favorite, <laughs> favorite highlight play? 
I was gonna say the interception, but like that was pretty. But it wasn't like a. But it like it wasn't the game ceiling interception. No, no. If you would, <laughs> if you would, like a big play. But it, but it, it, but it changed the course of the game. Now, if you would have caught the last pass, it yeah. would have been. Then it wouldn't been game ceiling interception and game winning yeah. catch. But yeah, it, it yeah. wasn't. So. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna keep me up tonight. Cole, your turn. Um. Well, first <laughs> off, I think you know. I I said this. Uh, you know. Like every year, you need like one time to test whether or not to see if you still got you still it. got it. You know, and this was like one of those times. You know, and I think like we all still got it. But yeah, Is that rise, true, Cole. Yeah, camaraderie rise. Like I think, uh, yeah, I think we're just like a closer team after this. I think yeah, it was yeah, a good team sure. Building exercise, and I think you know we're just there's no other path. We're destined just to fucking dominate. So yeah, <laughs> fuck with that, Cole. But great, but great. On, honestly, like, the one play that sticks out is that behind-the-back pass because I'm thinking, so I'm, like, right beside Treway. I'm thinking, like, we're on the fucking two-yard line. Let's win the fucking game. And Treway and Tyler Seal ever try to get fancy, and that just comes back to it. <laughs> you know, listen, sometimes you just got to seal the fucking deal. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, what, like wait, wait to get fancy. I fly right there. The game was over. Yeah, you know? yeah. But – Hey, so Daddy. you know that everyone still has it now, but who surprised you today? Since yeah, I, I like missed that. the game, I want to know yeah, who yeah. was like, I like that. dude, uh, Nick. Nick yeah. was playing lights out, fucking corner He's defense. MVP Honestly, was. dude, Nick is had, a sleeper. Had yeah. multiple picks, mul- yeah. multiple whoa, whoa, whoa. shutdown defense. I don't know about multiple picks. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many picks you had? Nick? <laughs> they how, got two picks. How many Nick's? Well, I, I know that he had a nice pick right in the end zone. It yeah. was a huge play. I do. He was. That play Good. also sticks out. Yeah, we're going to get Nick on the mic here soon. Go ahead, Danny. Uh, I guess. I don't know. I just like like feeling like a kid again. I don't know. I just feel yeah. like I'm like back in like eighth grade again, just playing with a bunch of homies. Hell, yeah. In the backyard. That's what it's about. Yeah. So that was the best thing. And then there was a few like one-handed grabs. You had some so, one-handed grabs. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, mean, I mean, had some good catches. Shout out baby, great game, baby ball. But like, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Shout out baby ball. <laughs> Jeez. No. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Treway? Yeah, uh, the the toughest part was trying to facilitate the ball to everybody because you're all my friends. So I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't want to throw the ball guy. to just one person. I didn't. I tried to you know spread the wealth. Um, my favorite play, man. I threw a lot of bombs. Uh, <laughs> he did. You had an all time performance. Subtle. <laughs> yeah. Um, my favorite was uh, Danny's one handed catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming lefty, across it was the middle, a, yeah, it was a left-handed, lefty one-handed catch, like set us up for a touchdown. I that, like that was a nice play. Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, that, was <laughs> that, was that was a great Shaquille play. Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. That was sick. <laughs> Shout out Shaquille. All right, we're gonna bring in Nick Treway. You want to swap out Nick? I gotta pee. Real yeah. Quick. All right, go ahead. No, You're good. Same. Also. <laughs> all right. <laughs> good. Hey, uh, Noah, jump in yeah, there on yeah, Danny's yeah. mic. Yeah. Sub, sub out. We'll sub out a little bit. Where would Noah go? He might be in the bathroom. Mini, a, a mini, a mini break, but not really. You want to take a break for the for the camera? All right, we'll be right back <laughs> uh, with the roundtable podcast. We're back, roundtable. All right, so we added Noah the intern, Nick Sands. Shout out, no free shout outs. All right, so Nick, what was your favorite play of the game? <clears throat> Camaraderie. Give us their feedback. How does that. it feel to be the MVP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had yeah. some. He had some big time plays. And how was my press coverage? It was good. It was good. <laughs> uh, more of a You're de- defense side of the guy, but <clears throat> you know. But what I like about the game is like I love I don't know, I like being the sleeper. Uh, <laughs> Dark horse. Nick playing uh, that role, uh, okay. That's just a better fit for me. I took you serious the, the whole time, just <laughs> so you know. know. <clears throat> but yeah. The problem is after seeing this, no one is ever going to sleep on you again. Yeah, you know facts. I mean? You just let no, him know. It's, it's out there now. <laughs> Nick was laying out and shit. Like he, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Had a he few was. picks. Yeah, he you played like well. Nine touchdowns Once or something. Once I'm in the game, I'm in the game. Nick was the MVP. <laughs> Nick's the MVP. Yeah, I, so I, not just I not just rookie, surprise rookie of the year, he was MVP. No, no, MVP. For sure. he played really well. Mm-hmm. And that shows how bad my defense was because yeah, I, was, I was covering <laughs> him. <laughs> 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 no, nah, it, it was good. It was very competitive. So, no, uh, first off, put your mic in the right place. There you go, down. intern. There we go. Yeah. All right. Rookie. Let's, let's, get, let's get a mic check. Mic check, mic check. Yeah, you're wow. close. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Is that, say it again. Mic check. All right, you're good. All right, Noah. <laughs> You're the intern for fucking Columbus State. What do you think, buddy? I like it. It's fun. Coolest intern I've seen. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Tell me else you have stories like this. There, that's better. What do you what give us some feedback on being at Max for the last what, two months? Yeah, yeah. Just kind of things you've uh, grabbed, learned, seen. Just kind of give us like a little feedback on your internship. Because uh, there's a lot of people that reach out for internships. We don't mm-hmm. take a lot. Obviously because you're coming recommended from Don. 
you get the fucking nod. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So kind of give us a little feedback on that. Definitely. Uh, big biggest thing I noticed is if you got an idea, just go for it. Yeah. A lot I like of people that. just sit back and hesitate. I think it was one of the first things you said, told to me. It was, if we have ideas, we just do it. Yeah, that's true. We act on stuff. Yeah. And I think that's like one of the things that a lot of people, they sit on things for a long time, acting on that. And then also like, you know, um, being involved in the skits, like you're forced to like get on camera. Yeah. There, there's things that I do on purpose, right? Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, I still come back to Nick's air guitar skit, which was Gotta a couple make of a mark. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, because what happens is, like, you know, Nick's a quiet guy. I, I honestly learned more about Nick maybe at his wedding than I know about him, <laughs> just because it, you know, he doesn't talk a lot, right? That's just kind of his style. Silent killer. He's a silent killer, mm-hmm. which, is, but is why he's on the team, right? <laughs> nice, Danny. What? No one can see that tongue action you just did. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but when he then said in that original skit back in the day, I'm just gonna be myself. That's what I like about the content that we do because everyone gets a chance. Like the small arms Danny whole bit, right? That's you. That's really you. Most definitely. That, you know what I mean? That's, that's my point. It's like, you know, Dustin and I are our own characters. We've been doing this forever. But it's like when you guys then step into it and then can be yourself on camera, That that's what I probably enjoy the most. When I saw Nick like – Drop down air guitar. I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) You you learn a lot about someone by making them or watching them do kind of like improv comedy. Yeah, for sure. Because they, you know, their true self comes out. I think the first time I pulled you into a skit, Noah, you were like, well, what do I say? I'm like, you're just going to talk about the product. I'm going to ask you a question. (laughs) And you're like, oh, what are you going to ask? I'm like, you'll see when the camera comes (laughs) on. You know? I love that. Well, Danny's awkwardness on every. I was like, Danny, you're doing the interviews on this. He's like, well, uh, uh." I'm like, dude, but that's what makes him amazing, right? So it's like, but you're more comfortable (laughs) being awkward, Danny, now. More comfortable is the key. Yeah, not ever (laughs) all the way comfortable. (laughs) Let's be fucking clear. (laughs) I think one of the best is when me me and Kyle. uh, did the uh, commentating for the fantasy football or the football draft when <laughs> so Joe good. was the fucking when he was Goodell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Was Joe amazing. is a great Goodell. Yeah, that was for amazing. sure. That was amazing. <laughs> That's so funny. But that forces growth. That's kind of my point. Mm-hmm. Like to force Nick to jump in content, to force Noah to jump in content, to get Trayvon the fucking international model and in content. Like it's <laughs> it's one of those things where it forces the fucking it thing, which makes everyone grow. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it goes against every molecule in my body. I fucking love that. Every time, yeah. yeah. Does it? Does it feel that way for you too, Nick? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah. I can go back to when <clears throat> I took the class with you and Don, when you taught that class, and holy shit, I didn't realize how hard it was to just do videos because that's not, not yeah, yeah, yeah. who I am. So. Yeah, so when I was – so to Nick's point, when I taught the class at Columbus State, it was content creation and like social media marketing – and I would literally make part of the syllabus like you would have to do a video on your Instagram. And I remember one lady said she did 30 takes. And I was like, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> like, because that's just not me, right? Take, yeah, we usually do one. Yeah, one, one or two, take. right? Max. Yeah. So to, to your point, Nick, that forced growth, right? <laughs> so it's funny is because I think there was like, what, eight people in that class yeah. or whatever is small. Out of all the people to think that Nick would be the one that worked with us, he was the quietest guy on the whole fucking thing. It's it's amazing, but it goes to show that like, you know, he was like, oh, okay, this is something where you know maybe Silent I can for killer Silent man. Killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just uh, it's awesome. But that would have Nick probably not because he didn't do a good job in the class, but I know it was really uncomfortable for him. Mm-hmm. I can tell from day one, right? <laughs> so, but that's that's funny. Like when you force when I force people in that class to do things that are really easy for me, I then realize like, wow, this is like, this is not normal. This is not normal. <laughs> no. Yeah. 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 It was, it was interesting. That's cool. No, anything else you want to uh, talk about on the internship? Uh, no, not really. Just no. being in the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's crazy. Honestly, the fly on like, the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite, kind of. favorite I, bicep yeah. exercise. Oh, yeah. Trey, yeah. you can talk about yeah. that shit. That no, was like you being, before, being four a, years ago. Yeah, dude, like being a fly in the wall is like one of the most amazing things you can have. Like just being able to like, like sounds like eavesdropping, but just like listening in on conversations and picking strategies, pick, picking up like different strategies and different knowledge. Like that's, I mean, that's like what got me to where I'm at nowadays in life. For sure. So, yeah. Fuck with that. I talked Go about D. something, uh, you know, similar on a podcast recently. I think it was when I had coach Ryan on, I was telling him that 
you know, the years I was coaching down at Ohio State, I learned the most from going to the coaches meeting. Yeah. They had every Monday, they had a coaches meeting and I would go to it and like they would go over the strength conditioning stuff first and it would maybe take 10, 15 minutes or whatever. But I would always stay for the whole thing. Sometimes it'd be two hours, three hours. I wanted to listen to how they talked about recruiting and the different, you know, things they were like basically the way they would like argue and work out whatever problems was going on with the staff. And I did that every day for, I mean, how many years? It would have been five years, six years or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I learned so much about like how to be a coach, how to operate with people, how to kind of like work within like a, a team structure, probably more than I did from like actually training the athletes. Mm. You know? I think that's a good point because a lot of younger people, they're in that environment. They're like, well, I'm just packing orders. But that's not what it is. That's and so if that's the only thing you think it is, then it's not for you. You know what I mean? So I, I've had that happen where guys are like, oh, I get what you're doing, G. I'm like, oh, yeah, what am I doing? <laughs> Free labor. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you told me that. I was like, all right, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, okay. You don't get it then. You you, you out of here, boy. They're not seeing the bigger picture. They're not seeing Yeah, go ahead, Nick. Talk to I them. I mean – Going back to being a fly on the wall, I mean, you learn a lot, and that's okay. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. No, for sure. So everyone has to be at some point. Like, I was on a fly. I was fly on the wall for a gang of people, right? I'm paying attention. I'm seeing how they operate. I'm seeing how they deal with certain mm -hmm. situations. You know, and one of the things I tried to do when Max Effort started was be extremely transparent with all these young dudes, so they can see like the shit I'm dealing with, how I handle it, how I have to garth motherfuckers from time to time, you know, shit that's really difficult. Let them know, like, <clears throat> to create this life is not fucking easy. It's not easy any day, right? There might be pieces of time where they're smooth, but it's fucking difficult. And I think, like, being a fly on the wall to understand that's what you're signing up for. You're signing up to work in a really, like, a startup mentality type of business or with an <clears throat> entrepreneur like myself. And I always look at, like, Everyone that works with us is really mini entrepreneurs in an entre It's like I never ever say the word employee. I don't know if you guys have ever heard me even say that. I don't even talk like that because I feel like everybody is coming together to work towards a certain goal, but all has their own creativity. That's what I want. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like that's the thing that we're trying to like fucking water and grow. And that right there is like how I think you can be great. Like if I'm talking about like you have only this role and this is the employee and I'm the fucking boss, a lot of you young motherfuckers know way more than I know. That's why the fuck I got y'all. <laughs> I need that help, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's why when I go sometimes with some of the, especially some of the um, the art stuff, I go to Trey and Cole and be like, yo, I need to stay young on this. Like we want this brand to be hot. We want the high school kids that Dustin is training to want to fuck with this stuff, right? We're old, bro. We don't know some of this stuff. I know that. I'm cooler than most dudes, I think, my age. But at the end of the day, like, I need that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's, like, a big part of it, like, that everybody can contribute to, you know, the overall thing we're trying to build here. Yeah, I think, like, recognizing that is super important and just becoming more aware because, like, that's what it was for me, at least, back in 2011. Yeah. Like, when I didn't even know you guys were even in Pataskala. You know, it was <laughs> yeah. just a random so tweet. Funny you know mentioning old school and then a google search and then it turned into just wanting to be around or in the picture and then leading into an internship which i didn't even know what that even meant um, i don't think we knew either no dude. and then it was <laughs> it was just us upstairs naming chess workouts you know so good <laughs> you know and then it like kind of just snowballed and just staying around and getting a nugget here getting a nugget there um and then here we are today like you're a team. good long-term guy danny that's the one thing i'll say like you've never like rushed anything you've always tried to learn you've always stayed like you're extremely consistent you've only continued to grow mm -hmm. so like talk about that because i think a lot of people are rushing stuff from time to time because everybody wants it tomorrow including me right yeah but it doesn't fucking work that way well i mean i was the cookie cutter example from high school i i was going to be the i was going to be danny the accountant you that's know, so forever funny <laughs> you know what i mean small so, like, arms accounting uh <laughs> ltd <laughs> Don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like I don't even know why like I didn't take like an accounting class in high school or whatever like that it was just like the thought was like you, you, you know you graduate high school you go to school and then like your life were at X Y and Z company yeah and then that was it like and that was you know up to the point of my junior year and then it was like that's when I started going to old school being around different type of people you know, different types of people talking about different things. Yeah. Seeing muscle farm being exposed to that. And then it was like, I literally remember driving back 
I was coming around on on 70 <laughs> right before I got to Livingston. I was like, yep, I'm out. Like I <laughs> I had I went straight to my advisor's office that day and I was told him like I can't be an accounting major anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah, I was just like business management, and then like you know the whole story of like between my junior and senior year. Um, in the summer, I was working at a bike shop right off campus, and then you called me, <laughs> and was like you had like. I don't know. It was at least 10 cities or something like that to be in a uh, sales rep for Muscle Farm. And I'm like, shit. So I – You picked I did, Chicago, huh? Well, no. I didn't even pick anything. Oh. I finished I finished my senior year. So I basically – Oh, that's right. You didn't take it at first. Didn't take it. I forgot it, about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I, I graduated, and, the, and then nothing, <laughs> nothing was available. There was somebody there in Chicago at that point. Yeah. And then, like, uh, like a month or t- two months after that, um, I was working a terrible job, like sa- like sales door to door job. And then you and Adam called me, and basically accepted it on the spot. And then, like, within like three weeks, I was there and like up and running. It was yeah, insane. Yeah. So but, it was insane. Yeah, but that got me out of my comfort zone. I thought I was always gonna be in Columbus, you know. But going to Chicago and having literally nobody was the best thing that could have happened to you me. You think that was good growth for you, Danny? Mm-hmm. Not relying on anybody and just figuring it out. So, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I also think uh, it's kind of interesting. We don't, we haven't talked about this much, but we have two military guys, all right? Mm-hmm. No, because you're, you're reserves, right? Yep. yep. And so are you, too, right, Nick? Yeah, I still? was. Yep. Or Air was. Force, yep. So why don't you go ahead and talk about that real quick? How many years in? What uh, – <clears throat> Quick little, um, quick little feedback background. Well, actually, it's a funny thing. I'll go back to the AC- ACT thing. Please. Because I fucking never took it. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I really? Never, yeah, because my thought process was I never saw myself going to college. It just wasn't a thing. And okay. I'm pretty sure you had to pay to take the test. So yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I'm not going to make my mom fucking pay to take the yeah, test. Yeah, facts. So I was like, I'll just go to uh, – at the time we were in Cincinnati, I was like, I'll just go to Cincinnati State and then work from there. School, not my thing. Yeah. So after that – uh, cause we lived up here for a little bit. So I came back up here, lived up with some buddies on campus. I was like, I was working a job, but I was like, okay, like I got to find something. So I turned 20 and I was gone straight to boot camp, and then did air force what? for six yeah, years. Air force. Okay. Yep. Um, been all over, all around the world. Where have Coolest, you been Nick? Um, South America, um, Europe, Middle East, uh, fucking Japan. I mean, everywhere like all europe uh deployed kuwait uh egypt fucking dude everywhere. what's egypt like bro that's on my list man i want to see the pyramids so bad it is it's it's a lot to take in yeah for sure um it's crazy because it doesn't feel real when you're there yeah just so you saw the pyramids there. obviously yeah, yeah. We rode and camels. you're like how the fuck did somebody build these yeah and we rode camels through the fucking desert oh it's fucking, fucking epic crazy. nick yeah it was cool <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so literally everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty yeah, literally yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah, and like, I kind of feel bad because Sheree's like, "Oh, we should go everywhere and do that." And I'll go back and everything with her for sure. But I'm like, some of those places are wild. Yeah, and for sure. They're a different. It's different. It is very different. Yeah. And you need to know that going in, for sure. And culture, respect, all that. So you definitely need someone to like guide you through all those all those places. But yeah, six years. I said. And then around the four year mark is when I was like, okay, I need to like go back to school because I don't see myself doing Air Force long term. Yeah. So I went back to school, found Don, coolest guy, and then so I cool. just kind of fell into this and I was like, This is it. Yeah. This yeah. is what this is what I want to be in more business side, but this is where I need to be. Hell so yeah. It's kinda of fell into that. Yeah. Sweet so, Nick. Good shit. That's that's amazing the life experiences that you had in that six years. Yeah, so that's why, yeah, I just there's no one that'll like throw me off with anything that they do or so. Because you kind of seen a little bit of everything. Oh, I've, yeah, I've seen everything. Yeah. Well, not everything, but a lot. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's but the most Nick has ever talked right now. Yeah, facts. <laughs> <laughs> Can we clip that, Kyle? <laughs> uh, For sure. Go ahead, no. What's been your experience so far? Uh, so in what branch are you? Army. Army, okay. So uh, I actually went to Ohio State first for nursing school. Okay. Straight out of high school. Thought it was like a good route. So I knew I was, I was always interested in like health and helping people. But after three and a half years, it's like, yeah, this got into like the actual setting. I it took like, you three and a half years to figure it out? Damn. 
I was trying to write it out. I thought maybe it would turn into something else eventually. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, like, I don't really know if giving people medicine is kind of like my thing. I like more like lifestyle changes. And sure. So I was like, well, I'm not trying to pay for more school. Family doesn't have the money to do that. Yeah. So I was like, well, me and my brother joined the National Guard like six months apart. Went down, did basic training, came back. I was like, well, let's just go go for what I like to do. I've always had a passion for working on like exercise. So yeah, just go to exercise science, go start Columbus State. Maybe if I want to keep going, go back so to So you got the GI? State. Yeah. Yeah. And you did too, Nick? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> what – What's boot camp like? Because I think it's one of those things, like, guys that never have been in the military that like exercise, Mm -hmm. I always think to myself, like, could I fucking make it through boot camp? Like, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. it's it's one of those things that's, like, an unknown. So maybe speak on that real quick. Um, It's a lot of, I mean, shut the fuck up, do what you're told. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, but, like, I think it's more, like, kind of mental conditioning than the physical conditioning of it. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you got to because you probably feel like that way too, right? It's like like we never experienced it. So correct. Yeah. So microphone. (laughs) Correct. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I. I mean, I. When I think about it, I think the physical part of it is probably actually easy when you break down what it is. It's probably just the they're trying to mentally break you, mentally break you, and make you become so regimented. Yeah. Yeah. You know that you then you follow orders. You get up at a certain time. You stand a certain way. All that stuff. So I think that's probably the the part I would struggle with because I don't like being told what to do. (laughs) That's a good segue into though. Those people think that they're just packing sacks. A lot of the people that couldn't make it through boot camp only thought they were just doing this bullshit and they couldn't see the Uh, bigger picture. mm. I gotcha. That makes sense. It's a good parallel, Nick. Yeah. You need to see You're a fucking good podcaster, Nick. Yeah. We're getting there, kid. He's a philosopher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the? <laughs> <It was>, ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, what are you? <laughs> <Jesus> <laughs> <Christ>. <laughs> Back to no. Oh, that snowballed. Camp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it's just a big mental game. Like, yeah. Both my parents were both in the military. Oh, okay. My it's your military is- family. Yeah. My mom's name is Margie. Everyone called her Sergeant Marge because she was. <laughs> we actually awesome. got kicked <laughs> out off of our high school grounds because she was making us work out too much. And the AD said, "You need to take it easy." Damn. Okay. All right, so mom. Stalk. <laughs> I like Marge. <laughs> All right, Margie. <laughs> shout out. Yeah. yeah. No free shout outs. So. Yeah, yeah. No free shout outs. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's a blur though. Yeah. Oh, yeah like it goes so fast. You don't want this. Is it twelve it. weeks, Nick? Yeah, it varies. Roughly. And they've been changing it a lot too. Yeah. So. It just varies, but you know, it's Nick, I f- or uh, Nick, Danny, I feel like you probably should have tried the military, in, in yeah, a different you're all that ruck stuff, I mean, yeah. right? Because yeah. I, I yeah. mean, doing the, the fucking ruck yeah. selection, right? Is that what they I, call, I think like, like the time, if the timing was different, and yeah. Like depending yeah. on what was going on in my life, I definitely would have gone that way. Yeah, yeah. Especially I, seeing my best friend go that way too, and he's done well, and he's still, yeah, he's still yeah. a ranger. So it's like he's a fucking yeah. beast. Yeah, he's a boss. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I feel like that's why you know the go ruck stuff is similar, right? So you're trying to get that challenge. Well, they're what their whole thing is is like trying to bridge the gap between like the general public civilians. and like yeah, civilians and like the military community. They're trying to like bridge that gap so yeah. there's some like some sort of common ground to see what of it's like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just to give you like a taste, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's and, pretty I, fucking and uh, for me, it's just like more of like an uh, appreciation sort of thing too. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. So, well, growing up with my grandfather being like my main kind of source of inspiration, being a World War II guy, I remember thinking like, I wanted to attempt the fitness stuff, but if it didn't feel like it was going to go, I was definitely not staying in my town. So I remember thinking like, I'm going to go to the military. I, I, I mean, that was my secondary thing because I was like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I want to see the world, mm-hmm. and I just want to be challenged. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to go to war. I'm not going to fucking front. Like, I'm not trying to do all that. But the reality you was looked like, at it as a ticket out. But I looked at it as a ticket out, 100%. So, and because my grandpa would tell me the story. He's like, yeah, you know, I signed up when I was 17. You know, it's like 1940 something. And he's like, they told me I had six months. So I'm at the beer joint. I'm drinking beer. I'm thinking I'm good. <laughs> Seven days later, they knock on his fucking door because I mean, it's fucking World That's War bizarre. II. Mm-hmm. And he's like, Fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like, man, bang, he's well, like, gone. He's my on mom's a ship. Thrown away the five by seven cards that are coming in the mail from the army, the marines, yeah. all that shit. So like, I never even like really saw any of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that obviously was another factor, I, probably. So 
but there, but that was definitely like because of his, you know, kind of the way his path was. That was something I thought about a lot. And if I just couldn't figure a way out, I was like, that is the way out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I always show love to military guys because I mean, I I was very close to that. If I don't have, honestly, if I don't get the job in the coal mine, that's probably what I end up doing because. If I don't get the job in the coal mine, I don't have enough money to get out. Mm -hmm. Because when Straight I was stacking up. lumber, I just don't, I just didn't make enough money. Yeah. So that would uh, definitely – it is crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. So that's why there's always this like uh, under – you know, like wondering, like what would mm -hmm. that be like, what, what you guys thing. got to experience. Yeah. yeah. So pretty cool, Nick. Yeah. Pretty cool, Noah, for sure. D, what you got? Um – I got nothing. I'm just daydreaming about boot camp. Right now. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, all the physical stuff. Like it, it would be an interesting challenge for yeah, sure. Yeah, it would be for sure. It's almost like one of those things you would you kind of want to experience it for the you know just the challenge of being able to say like all right I can get up and run so many miles every day and do all these different things. But yeah, I would maybe want to do it for like one day. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I'll do a, maybe yeah. I'll do a rock with Danny. Yeah. 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 I'm definitely not like dudes yelling at me and being stuck for 12 weeks. I don't know if I'd nah, fucking I, sign up for that. That'd I'd be tough I mean, for me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like I always knew like military was like not an option for me. Yeah, yeah. No way. I think it helped too. That, like, but you push yourself at a high level. So like the actual yeah. like physical part, I feel like you could do fine. For sure. I, I think part of it too, my mom, like I remember growing up because she like, you know, she was a flower child from the 60s, sure. early 70s. Her brother went off to Vietnam. You know, her father had fought in World War II, but she was like adamantly anti-war. Got it. So I can remember her like, I remember she said one that she said, it, like when I was like in high school, she's like, if they ever bring back the draft, she's like, you go to Canada. She, she like, like didn't want you to fuck with nope. it at all. So like I never, I never grew up, even though I had military in my family. Yeah. Like never thought like that it's was not an option. option. And like I said, I don't think I would handle, you know, just kind of the, the structure of it well. Yeah, 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 I remember, you know, Luke had a tough time with it. Yeah, it's true. You know, I forgot so, Luke Luke was in the military. Yeah, yeah, so he, I mean, he was a little bit lucky in a sense. He got to actually wrestle for the Army team. So his job was, after he got through basic and everything, he was just wrestling at the Olympic Training Center there. Yeah. Mm. But he, he hated the structure of, like, the guys that, like, basically they could pull rank on him and, like, tell him what to do. You know? Yeah, that'd be tough. And he said a lot of times the guys that would achieve the highest rank – he said those were the guys that like got beat up in high school, so now they had like a little bit, <laughs> yeah. you know, mm -hmm. little man complex. <laughs> it's, yeah. right. it's good you saw that though, because a lot of motherfuckers <laughs> there didn't realize that going into it, mm -hmm. and they got eaten alive. So. Right. Yeah. But, no, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I got I got total respect for you know people that you know put their name on the line and sign for the military. I just I just knew early on it wasn't for me. Like I never once thought like, well, if college doesn't work out, then I'll go to the navy or something. Like I just yeah, never yeah. never thought that. Yeah, I kind of like uh, real talk. Wanted to fucking challenge myself to feel like what the Marine boot camp was like. I don't know why, but that was like some one of the things. And I know it's fucking crazy. Oh, I think yeah. it's, but, but that's my men only stories, but, but also that's like one of the like you know the mentality through lifting and the things that I wanted. Like, yeah, I'd probably be in the day and it'd be like fuck this. But like the reality is that's something that I was always drawn towards. And I think with my grandfather being you know uh navy obviously that's a, a version of the navy that was some one mm -hmm. of the things we talked about but he also told me like he was on ships for you know months at a time and never saw land and he was like he would never go on a cruise he uh, <laughs> wasn't no fucking oh, he, he was like my grandma was always like can we go on a cruise he's like no, when i I'm got good. off that yeah. ship i'm good <laughs> <laughs> my grandpa was in a typhoon in like 1944 or some 43 and he said the waves are 45 feet and that he told God that if he would get through it, he would go to church every Sunday for the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> and that motherfucker ain't never missed church. <laughs> <laughs> so when I heard those, when I heard those uh, stories, I, w I was like, I'm That's good. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to wrap it up. This was a, a cool, just Turkey Bowl edition, drunk podcast. Um, shout you know, out Sam. Shout out Sam Adams. Shout out Max Ever Muscle. It was awesome having everybody on. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's Small Arms Danny. That is at Trey Speed. The graphic gangster himself, he's gone because he had to go to do TSA pre-check. I think he's so going to do that. He's going to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he can go through TSA. Yeah. Yeah. We got D Myers. We got Nick Sands. We got the intern. We are out. Peace. <laughs>